Okay, so welcome back everybody. I'm uh, down at Broadhurst Park today with former Bamber Bridge manager and current FC United of Manchester manager, Neil Reynolds. Neil, thanks very much for letting me come down today. Much appreciated. Um, staff here are brilliant. They even give a scouser like me a break, <laughs> so I'm, I must be doing okay. Yeah. No, thank you for inviting me on. No, yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I know Brian Richardson, you know, I spoke to you recently on the podcast and uh, I listened in, it sounded really eventful and it was funny, there's some good insight to, to what happens behind the scenes, so, you know, ask away yeah. and we'll, we'll hopefully have a good productive hour. Yeah, I think it's, um, I mean, the feedback I've had off a lot of the podcasts, particularly with the non-league managers, has been, been brilliant, so I think because maybe, even though the social media and everything's better now, I think the very fact that People don't see the behind the scenes like this stuff, like Thursday night training and stuff like that. And I think the feedback has been really, really good on it. So, um, really looking forward to it, really. And one of the things I wanted to start off first was like your playing days. So, obviously, um, I remember you sort of like in your later years. Mm-hmm. So, that I was like, you was, that was you were playing at Bamber Bridge, but then went on to the coaching side, didn't you? But, I'm just wondering if you could just give us like a little bit of a, a throwback to where it started for the playing days, really. Yeah, I mean, it started, I was playing for New Longton Rovers, you know, Sunday League side and playing away at Lost the Call. And uh, there was a scout there from Darwin, never heard of Darwin, well, as they call it, Darren. Yeah. Um, at the end of the game, the scout approached me, I scored a hat trick on the day. So, would you be interested in tech training with Darwin? So, where's that? You know, first and foremost. And he said, well, near Blackburn. So, that summer, left school. Went straight to, to uh, Pletgate High School, Darwin, we're doing pre-season training. Met Ian McGarry, who, who to this day is probably the best motivator, man manager that, that I ever played for. And uh, next thing I knew, I was running backwards up hills and doing press-ups up hills and, you know, doing everything but, but ball work. Uh, I remember my third session in, my fourth session in, I was I had a rope tied to my hand as well at Darwin and these, the back four are dragging me around, the midfield four are dragging me around and we, we were working on our distances and I came off and my wrists were... You know, swollen and red and bleeding, but but I never forgot to, uh, I never forgot that because you know distances is key in football. So, but Gary taught me everything I knew. <clears throat> we I spent four amazing years there, four amazing years at, at Darwin. Uh, I learned everything, and I remember last game of the season we played away at Vauxhall and uh, playing people like Howie, the Lynches, the Atkinson brothers. Uh, Paul Lynch was my centre midfield partner. Jonathan Smith. Uh, who's gone on to yeah, he's yeah. gone on to bigger and better things. You know, he was he was in the team and we had to win away at Vauxhall to stay up at the end of the game and we won last kick of the game. Uh, Steve Lynch, quite a name at Lance, he scored the winner and away we went. You know, we stayed up and we went into the dressing rooms and people of my age will remember the the old kit baskets, the uh, the wooden kit baskets, the, the kit baskets. Uh, sometimes they had like uh, woven ones. Anyway, we had a, we had an old really old one and, and McGarry coming to the dressing room. With a bottle of fizz and he jumps on top of the on top of the box and starts jumping up and down. We were all jumping up and down with him, and all of a sudden he, he just keeled over. He went, and we thought it was part of the show. Uh, later we found out he had a shadow on his lung, right. but and he'd, and he'd done it all season. So we thought it was you know part of the show, and you know fortunately for Ian, he, he needed he needed surgery, he needed to to recover. But that was kind of I'll never forget that day of staying up for for the two one win away at Vauxhall, and then obviously what happened to, to Ian after that. And and although he did return to management, uh, I'm glad. I'm glad that we found it. I'm not glad that we found it in the circumstances, but but I won't forget that. Now, you yeah. know, I was 20. I still, 45 now, I still talk about Ian McGarry being, you know, the best person that I worked under. I remember, you know, turning up for, for training and games. He'd look after me like he was his son. Made me sleep on a Friday night at his house so I wasn't late on a Saturday. Made me sleep on a Saturday so I could play with the under-18s on a Sunday. Take me down Darwin Alec afterwards with all the lads and, and it was part and parcel and then it was get on the bus and get back home soon, see you yeah. next week. And that was it, you know, there was no mobile phones, there was nothing, it was, a, you know, you're here at this time and you were there and he just taught me everything I knew and, you know, in that dressing room it was about winning. You know, I've seen, I've seen a lot of things in my career. At Darwin I saw, you know, cups of tea, hot red hot kettles, I saw people getting dragged out of showers, I saw uh, people being massaged naked on the physio bed, you know, you saw everything yeah. there and everything went and it was just a, they were full of men and there was yeah. me, I was a little kid and they were full of men but... You know, I didn't make the same mistake twice. If I was told once, I, I, yeah. I learnt my lesson, and I only needed pinning up from the likes of Martin Horsfield or, or Mark Walsh or Steve Wil- Wilkes to know that you know Saturday afternoon at three o'clock is sacrilegious and you mm-hmm. have to win. 
So that was it. You know, I, I did really well. Uh, Steve Wilkes then later took over from Magoo and uh, Bamba Bridge came in for me. And was, I was I ended up playing it. You know, I remember going training. Wayne Harrison was a manager. I thought it was just McGarry that was a little bit cuckoo, but then I played under Wayne Harrison. Uh, first training session, Thursday night, Leyland, there was a club captain, David Eves at the time, and uh, Evesy, Evesy had had a fallout with Wayne for whatever reason, and uh, I saw Evesy running round, running round, running round, and I thought, what's going on here? Evesy turned up at half six, Wayne Harrison said, you're not in this team. He said, you run round. He said, I'll break you. He said, you won't break me. He said, I'll just run round. Evesy was running it near enough full pelt and he did it for about an hour just kept running around and Harrison kept looking over have I broke him yet he's carrying yeah, on yeah. then in the session he went gaff anything else and Easy just came over and you know couldn't be broke but I, I was at I was at Bamba Bridge and you know it was kind of much of the same uh, we were fighting a, a relegation battle at the time we needed to, to win to stay up I remember making my debut I went at Barrow uh, up against Mike Marsh and I just remember uh, Wayne coming over to me and said son come here so you see him there so yeah, so I wanted to nail him, let him know you're here. I was 20, I thought, first game, we're at Barrow in front of, what, 2000? And I just went straight through Mike Marsh, and uh, the whole the whole ground I thought was going to get killed, and all of a sudden the big centre-half went over the top of me and said, if you do that, I'll break your legs. And, yeah, yeah. and all of a sudden, from the from the dust comes Wayne Maddox, uh, centre-half partner, See if you've got a problem, pick on me, not him. And I was lying on the floor looking up, and Big Maddo, who became you know, my best mate at Bamber Bridge, uh, looked after me, and you know after the game, and brought me in, in the old-fashioned bath, a man put his arm around me and said, you know, next time maybe don't hit the best player or the biggest yeah. player. You know, it's one of them. He so, was a good player. Yeah, he was yeah. brilliant. It was mad. So, <laughs> so I learned, and you know, we, we went on to we went on from strength to strength. Really, with Bamber Bridge, the, the following season, Wayne went. Uh, Tony Greenwood, you know, came back in. Uh, he, he'd had a, a previous spell with the club and, and did really well. And uh, you know, that season we we ended up finishing, I think third behind Burton Albion and Accrington Stanley. Got to the second round of the FA Cup, playing away at Cambridge. Trevor Benjamin, 69th minute penalty. Jez Baldwin gave it away. A uh, penalty that wasn't ever a penalty. And I remember, you know, we were sat in the, in the function room after the game, watching the draw, and, you know, the, the balls came out. It was Crystal Palace versus Cambridge United. So we would have gone to Palace, but yeah. it wasn't to be. Uh, so, yeah, we ended up in String Fellows that night. We had a, we had a good night. Not, not a bad night. No, it's not a bad night, no. <laughs> and, and away we went, and, you know, the, the, the career just went from there. And I had a hernia, hernia injury at... Uh, Bamber Bridge, I ended up going out on loan to Kendall, and uh, and, and and that was it really, you know. And then I thought, you know, I met I met my ex-wife at, at uni. I was coming out of uni, uh, travelling was getting a bit too much, and I went to San Francisco, uh, right. where I spent you know some, some good years. But, you lived around then? Yeah, living in Worley. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, living in yeah. Worley, so Clitheroe was handy. Uh, played a few games, and, and although I dropped down the standard, I thought it was relatively easy mm -hmm. at the time. And I remember that summer. Uh, Mick Hoyle was the chairman at Kendall Town at the time and he rang me up and said listen we want to make you our captain we want to come uh, can we meet you so I, know I said to Clitheroe I'm, I'm going to go and meet him so I, did, I left Clitheroe did the full pre-season uh, loved the time at Clitheroe there for about six months did the full pre-season I remember on the Tuesday night before the first game of the season we'd all been invited to Riley Snook Hall in Lancaster and I just remember glancing over and Hoyle had a, a lot of notes about, about this big so it's one of notes anyway. Someone went in, someone else went in, someone else went in. And by the time I went in, the one of notes had gone from way big to, to about way big. So he said, uh, right, son, this is what we're going to offer you. Uh, £150 a week. And I said, I said, what, what's the, the notes for? He said, oh, that, you know, that's for players who get a signing on fee. So I said, well, I would like a signing on fee. I've never had one before. He said, well, we'll give you 500 quid. I said, well, I said, I'll settle on two grand. Uh, he said, well, we'll settle on 1500. So I shook his hand. So there I came, came Kendall, Kendall town manager. I think Oily still after me now, after four games, said to the Kendall press, the move didn't feel right. I went back to clear the road, kept, yeah. the, kept the 1500, <laughs> and away I went. And I don't think I've seen it. I know, I've never seen Oily since, but no, I, you know, it, it was a bit of a joke at the time, and a lot of people did it. And so I went back to clear the road, and I said, the move didn't feel right. And that season, you know, we, we went on uh, to be really successful at Clitheroe. We got to the semi final of the FA bars, uh, we finished second in the league. and you know, it was the right move. Yeah. It was the right move, and you know, the following season, uh, the following season, we, we this is where my career changed a little bit. Uh, played away at Flixton on the fifth, fifth, fifth of March away, and uh, a lad had done me in a tackle, and I thought I'm going to get me on back on you. This is it. You know, it was one of the nights when the ground was quite firm, quite mm -hmm. hard. 
and we only played against studs in that days and I saw a lad and Melford night it was I saw a lad and remember that night? yeah, yeah. it's both Mosley and Flicks yeah. did all the Manchester clubs so I took off as I took off to do with two feet I've landed my studs got stuck in the ground and I felt my knee go uh, I thought that doesn't feel right came off did all the tests and everything thought it was alright three weeks later we're playing away at Sken at the old Scannersdale and I, was, I wasn't in the squad I was just warming up and I went to strike the ball and my knee just completely gave way snapped my ACL uh, needed the operation luckily I got in the operation in September and then played the last game of the season away at, uh, at home to Ramsbottom at Cliverall won 7-0 so I, you know, I'd know, i recovered from the op and I thought right you know, I'm 26, 27 I've got, I've got kind of you know, one more chance of it said at Clitheroe following season probably the best season of my career yeah. we, went and, we went and got uh, promoted we won the league with, with Clitheroe away at Nantwich uh, 3-2 went 2-0 up Gary Jackson 2 all, and I was on the bench that game I pulled my hamstring away at, uh, at Congleton the week before so that, that would have been because we didn't have a first division then did no. first division, no so that would be the equivalent to like counties prem into the it was Evil Stick yeah, Prem the Evil Stick Prem yeah yeah so I didn't have a lot in me. So I remember Martin Eatsoff was assistant. Scully were playing. He said, "Have you got any minutes in yet?" I said, well, just, "I'll just throw myself." It's the last game of the season. We have to win. Came on, uh, balls in our box. Adam Gardner went up. People thought he handballed it. Ref said, "Play on." He hit it out to Martin Aspinwall. Aspie travelled down the left hand side. Played it into Lee Cryer. Lee Cryer a little defeat, little back heel, and I just bent it in the far corner. And we won three two, and we won the league. And yeah. you know that was amazing. So that was that was kind of like the pinnacle of my career, you know. After that, I got into management with Club Royal Football yeah. Club, and then decided that wasn't right. Went back to playing. So I played with Bamber Bridge. Tony Greenwood signed me again. Then the first team coach came around, and then then I was getting a, a flavour of managing. And yeah. you know, although I was still playing, uh, I then became assistant manager yeah. under Neil Crow, and I got to about 37, 38, and I'm still playing. I'm still in the squad, and but I had a really bad neck at the time. And I didn't know what it was. Two years of it, went to the neurosurgeon, tried everything, acupuncture, reflexology, you name it. He said, son, you've, uh, your discs are fused at your back, on the back of your spine. He said, uh, see four, five, six and seven are fused. We're going to have to put carbon fibre discs in there. You're going to be in hospital for about 10 days. You don't have to think about playing football again. Your career over. So I went, right, OK. Had the operation. I came back from it. And uh, that was about the August. Then we went the way to March. I was assistant manager's Crowley. Paul McKenna was playing for us, got sent off in about the 60th minute. We'd use our subs, and then Phil Doughty's chasing the ball back, and he pulled his hamstring. Now, stupidly, I was on the bench that game. I've got the words of the neurosurgeon ringing around me. Don't ever play football again, son. Don't ever play football again, son. I said, Scully, I'll go on if you want. <laughs> so, as you do, we're drawing nil-nil. We're down to 10 men. Lee Dovey's behind me. I've gone in at centre-half. Ball comes up. It's got snow on it. It's coming down. I thought, what am I going to do? If I don't edit, it's going, he's going to throw in and probably score. I remember just the ball hitting me on my head and my body just falling in a heap. It felt like the whole body shuddered with metal inside me. Mm. Brilliant header, they didn't score. We drew nil nil, you know, but that was it for me. After yeah, that, yeah. I, I thought I was going to be paralysed after that. Did you feel it like? Yeah, I felt yeah, it. Yeah. I felt it and, and it was stupid, absolutely stupid. And I tell everyone not to do it. And then, you know, that was the end of Crowley that season. I became manager yeah. and, you know, the rest, obviously. How did, um, how did it, because, <clears throat> am I right in saying, where, where did you finish that season, that last season at Neil Crowe's? Did you, did you do all right that season? Or no, so the, the, the previous two, we'd got to the playoff yeah, final yeah, yeah. against Radcliffe, yeah. uh, Bernard and Jono, they beat us. We got to the uh, playoff final against Darlington, Marty Gray's Darlington, Sean Gregan. And then the following season, we had a little bit of a wobble and, and I think Crowley, we, we ended up not winning in 10 games yeah. and we played Mosley on the Tuesday night. And he came up to me afterwards and went, you know, that's me done and yeah. I'm going to say that they want you to take it over. So my first game was Camel, um, Camel Laird. Uh, no, sorry, tell a lie. Colwyn Bay away. Uh, we drew one all. Regan Linney scored. Yeah. Uh, and the equaliser. And that was it. And me and Wilesley became a management team. Simon yeah. Wiles became a management team. And we finished that season uh, really strong. We ended up winning the cup. Uh, Jamie Milligan scored. Free kick was called up the manager at Bama Bridge. We, beat, uh, we, beat, we won at League Town uh, against a team called Grantham. Uh, we, so we won the cup and then. Is that like the. Um the mm. like Evo stick yeah Evo stick Lee Cup yeah the Dutes and Cup so first piece of silverware yeah. uh, it was amazing you yeah. know and, and, and stupidly I came out in the LEP that summer and said I'm not settling for one trophy I want to get promoted this season yeah. you know Banbridge was one of the smallest budgets and had no right in doing it South Shields being in the league and so on and 
come the end of the season, you know, we came up against my director of football now, yeah. Brian Richardson, who's Prescott side on a red hot day in front of two and a half thousand, and uh, we ended up winning the game one 0 I went. You, know, you went, yeah. yeah. And, and I went the local game. hero Chris Marlowe, you know, played at played fat, over five hundred games in Baton yeah. Bridge. Absolute hero. He, he found himself on the bench, and I turned to the Mars and said, "Come with the outcome of the man." And and he came on, scored a goal. There was there was flares that went off, everything, and yeah. you know that that moment will will last will last I forever. Remember, for me. It, it was like a red hot day, wasn't it? Boiling, boiling. I remember, I remember, I remember going. I went with uh, <laughs> I went with Tom, with Tommy Lawson, and I can't remember who else was with us. And it was that jam as you went into oh. like Briggs Ground to the right as you went in. It was he, so you couldn't get round. So we walked around the other end, and at the time, I think um, I, I think I, I was at Marine with Tommy then, and we walked round, and the Prescott fans were there, and you know when you're going off, and, you <laughs> and like they walk, oh what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, you know yeah. all that crap, like you know. But I always remember it like red red hot. To day, be, to be it? fair, Prescott could have won, yeah. should have won. They probably felt aggrieved that they didn't they didn't win. Uh, but that was, a, you know, that crowd, the capacity yeah. of average 2,600, and that was set in 1996 when they played uh, Czech Republic. Right. When Paborski, oh, everyone came over. Uh, well, Euros, two, that's it. it. Well, yeah. There was more than 2,600 on that day. And, yeah, there was. You know, I think yeah. we just kept it quiet, but it ended up, it ended up being fantastic. Yeah. And you know, not for Brian and, Pre- and, and for Prescott, but for for myself and Banbridge Football yeah. Club. That was that was a real. That was a real uh, pivotal moment in yeah. the club's career that we could show that we could get out of the league and me being me, you know, I didn't want to settle there, I wanted more. Yeah. And, and then, you know, started the following season. I remember beating Stafford 6 0. Uh, we beat Daisy on the Legs Cup 5 0. And then my phone rang, anonymous phone call with their number. Uh, we're interested in you becoming FC United manager. Right. And, I, and I remember going back into Daisy Hill, clubhouse after the game, Frank Doyle and Neil Crow were there. Crow were director of football, Fran was chairman. And I, it's Crow's he likes and a ghost. A ghost. I've just been up for the FC United job. He went, well, I said, well, I have. I don't know how it's come about. He said, well, you can't, you're on contract. I thought, well, I'll just, you're always yeah, contract. I thought we'll, just, we'll just put that to one side. Well, contract, but we found out that the contract was in the top drawer after oh, that. Oh, one, yeah. <laughs> one of them. One of them famous non-league yeah, contracts. Yeah. So, so, you know, to and fro in two or three weeks, I, I made the stupid, stupid decision of me and our Jack visiting the stadium on a, on a Sunday without anyone knowing. I met a, a, a young man outside who let me in. Uh, they call, goes by the name of JB. Uh, and I went in and I thought, wow. And I went to the top of the stairs and I looked over the stadium and I thought, wow, again, how can I turn it down? And member FC at the time said, listen, bring aren't going to let you go. You're going to have to force it. And I didn't I didn't know how to force it. I went around to see my dad. Uh, my late dad, dad passed away at Christmas and, you know, tough times. But I went to go see my dad and I said, what are you, gonna, what, what are you thinking, son? So I'm going to go to FC, dad. And he said, right, OK. I said, it's not that far to travel. He went, oh. I said, I'm a Bamber Bridge fan. I said, I'm not going anywhere. I said, well, you're not going to come with me. You're not going to... I went, no. He said, I'm a Bamber Bridge further through. He said, I'll see you. It's me, Dad. Yeah. I went, all right. He says, so you make your decision. I'll stay here. I'll see you when you come here. I'll see you when we go away. And apart from that, all the best. So I was like, right, all right, Dad. <laughs> no problem. Anyway, the, the, there's a picture on my WhatsApp picture. Uh, last time with Dad here, uh, Bamber Bridge Beatles. I remember going over to my Dad. And, you know, he, he just said to me... Uh, he said, son, you know what I said four years ago, I can, I can never lose, really. He said, because when we play Brig, Brig's a club I love, and obviously my son's in the other technical area, so yeah, yeah. it's a win-win situation for me, but that was loyalty, yeah. you know, for your dad not to come with you, and he'd been everywhere with me, Clitheroe, and yeah. Bridge, for, you know, not, not to come. Uh, he was a United fan, I don't think he liked United very much, so <laughs> I could have done with it, uh, but he didn't come, but I then came here, and, you know, I've absolutely loved it, and I'm coming yeah. up to do five years here, and, I'm, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm loving it. Yeah, it's a funny one, really. It's funny you should say that, because... When I was at, when I was obviously at Skem for like 10, 11 years, and then when we went to Marine, my dad was exactly the same. <laughs> because my dad was like, with Skelmersdale, you've got like people who are from there, know, you've got like the old town, which is like a village, and then you've got like the overspill, which is the newer town. But he was like, he went watching them when they were at Wembley and that. And then when I, when, bearing in mind we got the bullet, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I said, uh, oh, I'm going to Marine. He said, are you going to come to a couple of games? He went, oh, my hell. Like, you know, like, not, not happening. Um, so it's funny, that, like, it, but football Loyalty. allegiance yeah, is happening. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, listen, he, he, he gave up his season ticket after 50 years at North End. Yeah. 
Bamber Bridge treated him unbelievably well. And I just, I'll just tell people this, you know, he, like I said, he, he passed away. And, and, you know, what Bamber Bridge did for me, or did for my family, you know, will never be forgotten. Yeah. Uh, George Halliwell, who was the ex secretary. Oh, he, lovely he, fella. Yeah, George. Yeah, he yeah. walked behind the coffin right. one day. Uh, he had a shoulder operation, but I asked him if he carried my dad's coffin. He, him and Maggie looked after my dad. Right. You know, and he, in his last couple of years, he'd pick him up and do everything. Anyway, he, he died uh, on the day of the funeral. We, we, we wanted the. Uh, funeral car to turn at Banbridge Football Club. There was everyone there on the car park clapping him. We then went uh, to the uh, to the crematorium. Uh, people from Banbridge Bridge all turned up. We went back after the game and they'd given us, you know, the, the food at massively discounted price. They'd given us a function room for free. They'd done flowers for it's free. Class, isn't it? uh, they've given him a, a plaque on his seat now. We are due to uh, scatter his ashes over Banbridge Football Club. You say what you want, you know, he, that club is, is so special and it was it was it was hard moving here. Yeah. It was really hard. But it just shows you never forget and, and I've got no animosity there, they've got no animosity with me and but my dad was a really popular character and it just shows that, you know, the level that a football club will go to. Jamie Milligan wrote some beautiful words and it and yeah, I put them in the uh, the funeral programme notes. You know, Jay came to the to the funeral, he checked somebody the other day, how are you doing? Crowley, Stu Barton, you know, they're all there. It's, it's, it's a big family and, and it just shows that you meet some amazing people in football. Oh, yeah. and, and, you know, football's football's about opinions, and at times you fall out with people, especially in the technical area yeah. on the pitch. But you know, when when it's time to pull together, it, yeah. it shows that the community comes together. So for me, that was a that was a proud I th- moment. I think I think that's um, that's key. I mean, I was talking with Phil Priestley um, yesterday, um, and we were on about that and saying, like, you know, it's funny when you actually you don't realise at the time, but when you actually sit back and you you think of all the people that you've met through non-league football. <laughs> You, you you'd be actually quite blown away, and you know, particularly like when you start when I was starting the podcast and that the amount of people you're thinking, you know, bloody hell, I've known them. He, well, me and Phil were saying I've known him nearly twenty years, and it's like all through football. But I, I can't yeah. believe that I've been I've, I've been in thirty years. I've yeah, been yeah. in non league sixteen. I made my debut, and I'm still in at 45, 46 yeah. Now I'm I'm still in, and I have never had a season off. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday yeah. has been my life as a footballer. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and yeah. again has been your life as a manager. You know, yeah, you, you yeah. don't get, but you meet some amazing people. Of course, you fall out with people. That's yeah. what you do when you tell someone he's a tit and this and yeah. And you know, there are a few tits out there. I'll be honest with yeah, you. Yeah. They might think that about me. It's, it is what it is. But well, you, but well, you meet some amazing people. Well, while we're on camera, we, we had a bit of a ruckus, didn't we? Yeah, about we did. Yeah, ago. we did. We yeah. did. Yeah, we did. But uh, mm-hmm. it, like you say, it does it does happen, doesn't it? Well, I, mean, I was taught. Listen, you have a ding dong on the pitch, and I learned it at Darwin. Yeah. You won't have a pint after the game. Exactly. And right, it doesn't matter yeah. who's broke your nose because yeah. people did. I, I talk to my lads now. So you talk about marking in the penalty area. I said I used to get punched, I used to get nipped, I used to get bit, I used to get yeah. licked from my bottom. Russ Clark played against him. He licked me from my chin to my forehead <laughs> with that disgusting football breath. Breath, he's just licked me. Get on with a game. What are you talking about? That like yeah. one of them. And, yeah. and, and I say, you know, you're going, you know, this, I'll have you after the game, after the game, going by my pine. Yeah. And that's what it is. I think I think these lads now, uh, lucky than we're talking, he, only up to 10 years ago, it was miles worse than what it is. It's now. absolutely brilliant. We played Warrington this season and uh, Luke Griffiths got sent off. And he's had a ding dong war the Warriors of town players yeah. you know, on the game and coming off the game the Warriors town players like, I'll fucking smash you, I'm gonna fucking yeah. do your house and all that. Chris well, come on then. So we're in the clubhouse after the game. Chris got all the lads sat there on his own. He's like, Where's he live? Where's he live? I said, What do you mean, where's he live? I'm gonna fucking brick his house tonight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let him know I'll say it's game before see. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna brick his house, I'm gonna do him. Anyway, Chris' house never got bricked. But I just thought, <laughs> you know, why say it? Just go and have a yeah. bite with each other, yeah. it's ninety minutes think, of football. I think once the once the dust settles yeah. and that and then you you actually realise, don't you? Oh, well, it wasn't as bad as, uh, nah, it's not as you that think. Bad. It's a game of footy and everyone wants to win it. And yeah. You say things and do things. Pa- and oh, well, def- your passion runs high because everybody. I said this to somebody. He said, Have you worked out what non league footballers earn and managers uh, to the hours that you put in? It's way less than minimum wage. You know, oh. I'm talking you know, particularly at our level. I still say our level at this level, but. You know, everybody on a Saturday and a Tuesday, and, and they, they're there to do one thing and win, and, and both <laughs> sides can't win. Depends who you ask. Yeah. On our forum, that meeting against Liverpool last week, someone's got calling me out saying I earn £60,000 a year. £60,000? Yeah. Well, so, no, for the record, no one here, £60,000. Well, I'm hoping to get a little <laughs> drop at the end of this. <laughs> but if you're on that sort of Yeah, thing, exactly, yeah. But, um, no, no, one of the things, particularly about this football club and everything that it stands for and, and like say for somebody 
like me, like myself, who you know, I'm not a Mancunian, I'm certainly not a Manchester United fan or anything. But one thing I will say is, I do, um, I, I buy into the the community side of it, and I, th- I think it can only be a good thing. And you know, the FC United, I think they've had in in the the sort of years that they've been going now, they've had an awful lot of success and. You know, sometimes when when you're in this division, I think you'll probably agree with me. Yeah. This division, the it's not the Evo Northern Premier, Premier yeah. Northern Premier now. It couldn't be any tougher, really, could it? It's the best. It's the best. I've said it, and yeah. people have said, "Hey, they get beat. They get beat. It must be a crap league." That it's the best it's ever been. Credit to Northern Premier League. Credit yeah. to everyone that's participated in. You've got the likes of Kevin Phillips now at South Shields managing a full time side. You're not yeah. telling me that they're doing it for you know for nothing at this stage of football. Yeah. You've got you've got a lot of ex pros now dropping into this level of football mm-hmm. due to the the finances available. Yeah. You've got grounds being developed. You've got chairman or or, or or basically backroom staff or board members throwing everything at it to get us out. We've got the best stadium for me that sits outside the national league. We've got the best fan base that sits outside the national league. We've got you know it's absolutely amazing. But what it does come with us is a cost. You yeah. know this wasn't free. It was seven million. You know we we didn't budget properly when we bought it. We still got repayment costs. We're still, you know, we're in debt, and people people need to know a couple of million pound in debt. Mm-hmm. We have to repay every month. Our monthly outgoings are, you know, they're incredible, and that's why our budget is so low. But people go, stadium's amazing, fans are great. You yeah. must get in, and it's not. And people have got to come and see it, but live it. But but what we have got is a fan old football club. We're members, you know, one member, one vote. Uh, I'd fall in love with fan old football. I, I'll say that, you know, and even if. Results didn't go for me, and the club decided to change manager one day. I'd still be, a, I'd still be a fan of fan old football club, and, and you know, I'd still be a supporter of FC United. Right. You know, I'm a member. My son's a member. My daughter's a member. You know, I buy merchandise from the shop. I, I buy into the club ethos, and you know, it's incredible. You know, um, without I don't want to you know intrude on it too much because it's not something that I've asked managers to say. But where would where would FC United's budget sit? Like it's in a league table. You know, obviously, I don't, don't want you to sort of give numbers. It, what it, it, the budget? Would you say? Would well, like bottom three. Would you? Yeah, yeah. Whatever they want. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. we've got, we've also got a factor in which no one can believe it. I speak to different managers. We've got a factor in NI. We've right. got a factor in growth. We've got a factor in pension. Yeah, we've yeah. got a factor in travel and expenses. Yeah. You know, the only thing we're not factoring is a coach to and from the game, but we'll cut down on them at the minute because the re- the money's got to go on the stadium. So when the club give me the budget, a playing budget of three thousand two hundred. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we are massively up against it. The work that's going on behind the scenes to improve that, to increase it, the work with the council, looking at pay, repaying bets off, hopefully we can come and come again. But people go, nah, you haven't. I go, yeah, we have. Come and be manager you, for one day. Do you think people would see the, yeah. um, what it is? Of you know, the stadium and the, and the support and then think they're till... And they should be. You know, if we didn't have any debt, we, yeah. we would be flying, we'd be in the national, under Neil Reynolds, under whoever it may, in the national league, pushing league two, that 45 grand, 45,000 45, pounds a month that we pay off, yeah. that'd be thrown into the playing structure, we'd be full time. We're not there yet. Yes, we've got the best facility, but it's come at a cost and the, the money that was put away for FC United Stadium was was about 5.2 million start. Right. They didn't get the, you know, the 10 acres lane uh, site fell through. Uh, Oh, so it, was never, it wasn't no, 10 acres lane. Right. They'd already spent about a quarter of a million on all the drainage and stuff underneath Shit. and all the pipe yeah. work. And then we got told we couldn't do it. So this piece of land came up here. We knew the stadium was going to cost more. It ended up costing about 7 million, 7.2. So we, 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 that wasn't me at the time or the, or the board. Then over budgeted, we knew that we had to go through community shares and get people to, to lend the club money, etc. And then we moved in. And I remember one supporter saying to me, uh, it was like when we moved in, a couple of years later, one of the mates turned around and said, this is like having a mortgage, isn't it? They didn't think because they'd just been living, you know, capping down, playing outside yeah. the very football club yeah. and, and travelling all over the country. And all of a sudden, as a member, as an owner, you've got bills to pay. It's like going from living at home, paying, keeping it. Yeah, of course to, it is. To having a mortgage. Of course like, it yeah. is. And, and this is what I want to shout about. And, you know, tongue in cheek to the radio on Saturday, without me standing on the on the pitch on the Saturday afternoon with a microphone and telling the week gone by, people just speculate and talk shy, to be honest. There's so much shy that gets talked about this football club. Um, um, you know, football's about opinions, and you're allowed to you're allowed to talk about it. But some of the nonsense that you read or yeah. what you say, you're just like, oh, give it a rest. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I was once told that if, if they're talking about me or talking about the club, then you know, something going wrong in their own life. Yeah. If we're living rent free in their head, then yeah. that's all be yeah. it. But you know, they're the facts. You could have Natalie Atkinson. You could get the board. You could get the members. You could look at the you know the, the monthly minutes that come out. There's there's nothing to hide. And you know, yeah. although it's an, an amazing football club to manage and 
I'm hopefully I'm going to be here for years to come. It's a fucking tough gig. Yeah, yeah. It's a tough gig. And yeah. unfortunately, the kudos of FC United and the facility doesn't do it anymore when you're offering 200 and someone down the road is offering 600. Yeah, I think when you when you measure it up, like when you, you know, with no disrespect to, to, to Bamba Bridge, but when you've gone from, because I know obviously the club itself, Bamba Bridge, means a lot to you, but when you're actually going from that, which, you know, probably averaging gates of like between three, 400, yeah. to then turning up here and it's... Yeah. You know, I, was, I was on a net budget of Amber Bridge. Brown envelopes existed. Yeah, <laughs> you know, they were great then, Brown yeah. envelopes. <laughs> and they're still going around. The tax man's yeah. listening. <laughs> and they're still going on. And some people go, no, we're doing it. I see yeah. my brown envelopes going. Yeah. So it still happens here. We don't. You know, everything's by the book. We factor in every, yeah. every single thing. The odd thing for me is that if I'm offering someone 150 quid a week, I'm not really offering 150. I'm going to work out what they get paid annually because there's your gross. Are you coming yeah. to the pension? That's it. What's your NI going to be? That's it. Your employee's yeah. contribution? That's How can I do my maths for him if he's not a player? Yeah. Luckily, Bry's doing it now because he's, yeah. he's got nothing to do at all. So he well, I was going to say, yeah, he's the teacher, isn't he? <laughs> well, so you're not your teacher, <laughs> yeah, job, yeah, so. yeah. But, uh, yeah, it'll give him something to <laughs> yeah, do. Something to do. <laughs> Instead of ringing all of us and <laughs> can't get off the phone to him for three and a half hours or whatever. Yeah, well. So, only joking, Bry. But what, one big thing that I wanted to say, you arrived at the club, I looked at it last night, Correct me if I'm wrong. October 2018. So you'd started the back end, season back end of October. Yeah. Back end. 28. Yeah. Back end of October 2018, and you'd obviously taken the start of the season at Bamber Bridge, joined the football club. Did you think because the club was was it was fair to say that the club was in a difficult position? But did you think coming in, I can keep keep it keep it up? I spoke to loads of people. Right. Run, run and run even harder, don't yeah. touch the club. Do not touch that football club. Darren Kelly was the best. I was getting on the on the coach. We were playing away. Uh can't remember we were playing Bamba Bridge and cut phone rang Darren I rang Darren Kelly. Said, Dad, do I take this job or not? He went, No. He said, Don't touch it. He said the club right. is in such a I've just turned it down. You know, they won't mind me for saying this. Mm. Other people turned it down. I then visited the club on the Sunday and I thought, stuff, I don't care what anyone says, I'm making my own decision. Right, yeah. Yeah, I weren't told the full truth when I took over. He was he was painting a different picture. You know, four weeks in. I took over, I got pulled into a board meeting to say that the club's £15,000 over the budget already. Greaves is blown it. I need you to, we need you to reduce it by a grand a week. However, you've got 15 contract players. Um, bearing in mind, 10 of them contract players was your, already the four grand a week, the weekly wage that they were paying then. I thought, wow, how's this happened? You know, so I really did get hit from a high. But took over, I think we went six unbeaten. You know, so we had a really good start. And then the debacle was Boxing Day. You know, there was two debacles in that season, Boxing Day. Uh, sorry, it was three. I, 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 good stories here. Boxing Day, uh, York City, and Nuneaton. And we'll start with the the Ashton game uh, away. So everything was going great. Turn up on Boxing Day, and uh, on the Thursday night, Thursday night before, I'm uh, taking training, and Harry Winter hasn't turned up. So I'm like, where's Harry Winter? Where is he? Where's Harry Winter, lads? You know, here, Gav. I said, no, no, I'm not early. He went, you don't have to come on a Thursday if he's been doing a, if he's on a night shift. I said, what do you mean you don't have to come if he's on a night shift? Don't have to come. Gaffer, like him. I said, well, I'm the new manager now, he's got to be here. Someone better get on the phone and ring him. He rings as, as he's on the set. I'm, I'm not coming in. I said, I'm not, I don't have to, it's in my contract and all that. I said, all right, okay, bang. Turns up at Ashton on the, on the Saturday. Well, he must have thought that I weren't going to play him, but as it happened, I had to play him. Walked in dressing room, been stunk. Christmas Day, here we go. Who's had a, who's hey. had a drink? Hey, well, I couldn't pinpoint who it was. Got beat 1 0. Worst game of the season. Come in afterwards, big flipped it. Tactics board winner, new captain Michael Potts. The whole lot went, you know, who's, who's letting us down here? And, and you could feel in, you could feel that turn, you could feel that that neglect towards the football club. That kind of, we are, we're here, we're on contract, we'll do. And that's not Harry, I love Harry to bits, he's a brilliant lad. But that was, that was systemic about what had happened. Uh, just prior to that, just prior to that, I found out when the club had, had no money and uh, we had to play a, a friendly against Chatterton on the 13th of December. And I remember going into the lads and said, listen lads, you're going to get paid. Clubs struggled a little bit. They didn't, it wasn't as transparent as me. Can you all sacrifice your wages a week? So anyway, everyone went, yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone's going, yeah. I thought, oh, brilliant. Lloyd Allenson stands up. Well, bearing in mind, Lloyd Allenson just got back in the team got paid his full contract money throughout the season. He put a nail through his hand at work, but the club stupidly still paid him. So, Allington, who was player of the year before, stood up and said, I ain't doing it. I've got, I've got Christmas presents to buy. I've got kids to feed. I've got... I said, hold on, Lloyd. I said, just, just give us a week. 
just a week, no, I'm not doing it, not doing it. So right, and anyway, a week later, put Lloyd Allen on the transfer list the way he went, you know, and that was that was what was cutting through the dressing room at the time. But that was the Ashton game. Uh, we then got to York City in that season. Uh, we it was on a it was on a Saturday and people people will never forget it. The game got called off about an hour before there was a monsoon on the pitch. Absolute monsoon. And uh referee comes out and says, I can't play it, lads, can't play it. So this was coming towards the end of the month, probably the end of March time. So lads get paid at the end of each month, they, they do etc. And uh, but the non-contract players, by that point there was quite a few because I'd moved a few of the contract players on, but the squad was still really imbalanced. And uh, we, the, the payday was on the Tuesday or something. Yeah. Anyway, the lads didn't get the lads didn't get paid for the York game, but the York game had been rescheduled for a week on Tuesday, so they would have got double bubble in that week. So it was it was all, but the, they just didn't commit. They, like, they didn't they didn't tell the players. So we're due to play Nuneaton at home. We're coming towards the end of the season. We need to win. We're still trying to stay up. We're doing our everything to stay up. Anyway, he's over in Australia now, so you'll never hear this. But Josh Wallen came to me. He said, Gaff, have you heard about the WhatsApp group? I said, no, what, what WhatsApp group? He went, the club don't care about me. We don't care about them. I said, I've never heard of it. What are you talking about? Anyway, I've done the team. Bang. Playing. Next thing, after 26 minutes, we're 3-0 down. Lads walking around the pitch. I went to the. I went to the it off. Tossed it off. Went yeah. to the kit man. I said, "Listen, get me numbers eight, six, and, and nine up. Bang, bang, bang. Three of them straight down the tunnel. Bang. What's going on? But finished the game. Got beat four 0 Lads tried to scarp her off. Tried to scarp her off the pitch. Fans had turned on them, and I, I'd started being. I'd, I'd poker face this all season. I told the lads. I told the fans nothing. I just carried the results and thought, nah, enough's enough now. Mm. I'm getting all the lads. I'm dragging them back. I said, "Listen, you've got to let me down. Go and see them fans now. The fans had." First time I seen him turn. That was tough, got beat 4 0. Yeah. Uh, and it was time to move a few on. And, and we went to Alfreton, you know, last game of the season. Uh, sorry, penultimate game of the season. And uh, and we won 4 3. And you know, I kind of drove in here. Uh, victory songs on, you know, Mission Impossible songs on, thinking we could still do it. We didn't. We got relegated. We went to Brackley last game of the season. We got beat 3 0 in the sunshine. But it was, it was. It's a known thing that the manager travels on the supporter coach on, right. the, on the on the way home. So I'm thinking I'm getting on the coach with FC United fans have all had a load of ale, I've just got the club relegated. And I remember sat with a few people, real prominent people, uh, in the club. This is while people are surfing down the middle of the coach so I'm just getting passed out because yeah. I was like yeah. steaming all day. But I got my point across and I said, Listen, the person I am, I haven't come out and moaned about anything. But this is what I've put up with since I've come in and they all went fucking hell you're joking you're joking and I said no and it's going to get worse before it gets better because the debt is just increasing the debt's increasing I want to get us out of the league however not possible anyway and, and, and that was it and then and obviously at the end of the season I said I'll make you one promise now I said tomorrow morning Sunday I'm bringing up that squad and releasing everyone apart from three Chris Sharp Louis Myers and Michael Potts and, and Donny who we were signing but he was at Fleetwood on loan so the rest have gone and we'll rebuild the side the next day ding 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 and then the rebuild started and met Brian Richardson for coffee and, and the, yeah. the rest was history. Yeah. So Brian would have been at Prescott at the time, wasn't he? And then... Just come out. Yeah, he was actually. Yeah, he was. He was. And then he he, he, he come in as your assistant. Yeah, it wasn't then... a legal approach. We, uh, I think he got lost. We were at Bolton Star, uh, Starbucks at Bolton. <laughs> and he was wandering around next looking for Costa and I'm upstairs and Costa's there. <laughs> Just not me, they shop in this Renault, not shopping. So we, we yeah. got a brew, we had a chat. I told him what we wanted. I think yeah. I think in fairness though I think Bride I think Bride made up his mind at the at the end of that season that he was leaving. Been unbelievable. Prescott, Prescott. an unbelievable, one of the best people you'll ever ever meet in football. Yeah. The most honest and loyal people. And it's funny you, you know, know everybody who's come on. Phil Priestley yesterday. Um, Phil Phil was saying I said I've never known anybody as loved as Bride in. I've never, I've never ever heard anybody say a bad word. Fuck me, Doc. What's the opposite of Marmite? He got on here and got to shine his Marmite. Some love him, some hate him. Brian Richardson is loved by everybody. So whatever the opposite of Marmite is, that's yeah. him. He's just, he's so calm, he's so cool, he's so calculated. He, he does everything right. I missed him massively when he went to Bootle. God, I felt like my, my limbs had dropped off. Not because of... Not because of what he does, because of who he is. Yeah, and, and, and he's, he's calm and influential. Oh, he's, he's absolutely incredible. And you know, the minute, the day that I could get him back after the bootle fiasco, you yeah. know, we wanted him back. But but that going on to that season, Bryce, and you know, if you identified a few, there's a lot of Prescott, Luke Griffiths, there's Jack Lenahan, there's this player, there's that player. And we and we put together this list, and mm. and uh, that summer, 
that summer we put together a new management team. So Mike Faulkner, uh, current assistant, Brian Richardson, who was my assistant, but he's now director of football, uh, Chaddy, uh, Chappie. You know, the clubs used to going on European tours. Uh, they were going to Germany, they were going to Switzerland, they've been everywhere. You're going on tour this summer, where are we going? Brighton. Brighton. So we ended different. Different. So I said to Adrian, I said, well, chairman at the time, what do you want? So it's a team bond that experience, Adrian. So find us a pretty cheap hotel and we'll just make sure that the lads live in each other's company. Cheap? Yeah, cheap, yeah, just get us whatever you want. So anyway, we played Lewis on the Friday night. After the Lewis game, we, we travelled to our hotel accommodation uh, in Brighton. Turned in up. Brighton, is it? Yeah, yeah, Turned yeah. up. This pub, pub, guy flipping. Who's in charge here? The guy flipping asleep here. Whiskey next to him asleep. I'm like, hey, mate, are you in charge here? Hey, what do you want? I'll come to check in. Oh, give us a minute. Anyway, stumbles around, comes away, he stunk. He was absolutely oh not flipping. God. There were people, heavy metal mu- musicians in there. It was, so right here, we're all, we're all here to check in, FC United. Right, you're up first floor. He said, grab your bedding up way past. So what? Grab your bedding up way past. 80 in that room, 80 in that room, and four in that. So what do you mean, hey? Go upstairs, there's flipping dormitories, bunk beds, there's no oh windows. It's the pits, it's absolutely disgusting. Lads are making their own bed at 11 o'clock at night. You couldn't write it. Me, Mike, Brian, uh, Johnny heads up in a room together. Uh, Mike Fulton has got a light above his head every time he sat up he whacked this flipping light oh. there were no towels in there was no towels so Brian and Mike went we'll go down to the shop and get some towels Brian comes back they only quid these towels anyway, yeah, put them on bed woke up in the morning picks up towels no wonder if can quid Brian look at the sides of them they were like little lamb towel. towels lamb <laughs> towels <laughs> so we couldn't do anything lads come down the next day bit, they've been bitten left right and centre oh. it was absolutely horrendous so we we, uh, we went to we went to play uh, sorry, Enfield on the Friday, Lewis on the Saturday. Uh, we went to play and we went out around Brighton. We had an absolutely brilliant time. We had to go back to the hellhole that was, you know, our B and B. But but it was Boxing brilliant. Cause it was a team, but yeah, <laughs> but it was worse than that. It was a team bonding experience. And we came back from Brighton and we went from strength to strength to strength to strength. Yeah. And we ju- and we just kicked on and it was incredible. And that season, you know, the season that that never happened. Tony leading goal scorer. Uh, Second in the league behind South Shields, we went to Shields and then Covid struck and we should have got promoted and we didn't. And you know, me and Brian look back at that and go, you know, that, that team then with Tundee up front, with your Linnies, with your Griffiths, with Curtis Jones. You're not gonna win money. Yeah, oh, listen, that team would have done well in the league above. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously Covid struck and you know we had we had to start again. But but yeah, that was the you know the first experience of Brian. Yeah, he's a, he's a good guy. Yeah, a good oh, guy. one of without a doubt, one of one of the best. Mm. But um, so as uh, it's funny because I, I say this, the COVID thing sort of takes over. So we lose virtually like two years, don't we? Yeah. Everybody's lives are like you know, one. and then you come back from that, and you, you, your team's a little bit changed up. Tundi, he's over it. He was over, went over to Ireland, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's, I think Tundi's been gone about. Come on, got about three and a half years now. Right. Started about three games, I've been on the bench about 150. Yeah, is that wow, wow. <laughs> yeah, I said to Tundee at the time, don't leave Tundee, don't yeah. leave. But anyway, he went, he went for Finn Harps and he's, he's gone everywhere. I think he's at Cork at the minute and, mm. you know, doing all right. Tundee's a great lad, should have stayed here. He might here. just like Guinness, Neil. <laughs> he <might> like Guinness. <laughs> he, listen, he could, you know, he went, did he go to, was it Hibernian or something? Yeah. Wherever, wherever he went to, he, he moved on and, you know, it's probably. It's a shame because you have to play. He wanted you know, to be a full time footballer and, and listen, we. He scored 37 goals that season. We found it really hard to replace him. And, you know, we, di- we didn't replace him until we turned Linney into a nine. Yeah. But nines like Tundee or Arby, you know, aren't around. Nines like Regan Linney aren't around. They're not around on our budget either. Yeah. But, you know, we started that next season. Uh, fucking you know, hell, we got to the first round of the FA Cup. Yeah. Doncaster Rovers on TV. Yeah, it, wasn't it? Yeah. Mika yeah. Richards, Alex Scott, uh, Guy Mowbray, they were all here. No one in the stadium. Can't yeah. watch it. Right. Get Tonk 5 1 at home. Everyone's watching it at home. But, Great experience, great for the club. Uh, you do the, think, don't give you had your own <clears throat> crowd in that day. Might be different. Might it, be two different. nil, Linny goals and scores to make it back two one. Yeah. If that crowd were in the stadium, who knows what happens? But but it wasn't it wasn't to be, and you know we COVID struck again, didn't it? Yeah. You know that November time, and and then we and then we came again the following season, which was the last season, and we probably underperformed in the league, finished eighth and ninth. But we we started on the the Phoenix journey, the European yeah. Trophy. We won that. Uh, and then this season, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's been a topsy-turvy season. I found myself building three squads. Who builds three squads in a season? The, the squad in the summer, which some of the recruitment wasn't right. We then rebuilt it uh, beginning of October because we were had to bring some loan players in, etc. And converted Linny to a nine. 
And then we've had to rebuild again in February. Callum Grimmin goes down to an ACL injury. Regan gets a move. Jack De Grucci goes back to Doncaster. Uh, Finn Armstrong goes back to Burnley. Michael Potts gets himself injured. Donny Hugh gets injured. So you're rebuilding it again, and we're trying yeah. to fill the next one. And you know we're currently what eighth and ninth and tenth in the league. And you know people, some people think they can do better, and, and that's fair enough. But it, it's hard. And then you know the board are telling us now, you know we, we want to cut our cloth accordingly and and save money for next season. And right. you know we're not going to reinvest the linny money. We're not going to you know kind of give you the money for gribbing. We want you to. We're not going to take more loan plays in that we've got to pay expenses to. You think, um, I mean from. <clears throat> I'm saying this from like a footballing perspective because that would frustrate, excuse me, that would frustrate the fuck out of me because um, what, I, what I'd be thinking is like, well, um, I'm managing the football club, you know, the people on the outside don't understand that I've had this conversation. So when we're just loitering about in mid-table in the league and people are like, well, why has he not replaced Lenny or why has he not done that? But as you obviously saying, there's, yeah, listen, there's a story behind anybody that. Anybody could criticise this, this. That current squad, the rebuild two, your Gribbins, your Linnies, your Curtis Joneses, your Donahue, your Boxes, you know, your De Grucci's, your Armstrong, all that crowd went top of the league mm. this season. And we were, we were, we were going to go in the playoffs. Listen, what happens, happens. You know, that's what happens when you take loan players. The Grucci goes back in the first team. You know, Finn goes higher. Linny goes higher. Mm. Caleb Gribbin, who's the best talent I've ever seen, gets smashed in a horror tackle. Uh, against Warrington. Tommy was a good tackle, but he's ended up doing his, his ACL, his lateral ligament, his medial ligament. Is that everything? Yeah, it was it was so, you know, he won't play again. And, and these were these were players that were unbelievable. I could see Jack the Grooch going back to playing the first team and Lava coming next. We, we, had, we, had, we were brilliant. Mm -hmm. But then he gets ripped away from you. And you've got to start again. And people going, how are you getting beat against Livertage? How are you getting beat here? Well, because we're replacing the 18 year olds because yeah. of the restrictions we're under last Saturday, Livertage, my front six. You know, uh, uh, wanting to rather from six or eighteen, but we're going to do that because yeah. I believe in the youth promoting. You know, playing Phoenix Trophy the other night. You know what? The, the, keeper. the only mean? sort of thing that you can <clears throat> say about that is like in a season where, yeah, all right, you're saying you know we're not going to go, we're not going to go down. To blood them, you know, selfishly for them, that is going to be an unbelievable experience. I mean, I still think we're going up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you do mindset, it. You do. This um, now this one that I you're gonna have to talk me round about this Go one. On. This Phoenix Trophy. Okay. Because and I don't mean any disrespect, to FC United fans. Before you uh, start kicking off on me, I just don't get it. Like we raise our game in Europe. We do well in Europe. <laughs> Europe. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's. Um, I mean. I'll tell you, I came about. I'll tell you, right, I came about. Okay. Not last summer. Summer before. Um, I was sat at my house. Which coming out of COVID or whatever, Adrian said and went, uh, how do you fancy taking FC United into Europe to play in a competitive uh, competition? Mm. I went, he went, we've been to Europe before, but we've never played competitively. So what do you mean? He said, well, there's some boards, chair people around Europe that are interested in fan old football club all coming together. All right. He said, so there's a Zoom meeting next week, I'm going to go. Do you fancy joining me? So I joined him and anyway, it was just a lot of foreigners on, on, on the TV screen talking you know, some from Poland, some from Milan, some from England, some everywhere. And I was United like, United Nations. Yeah, United Nations. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, and they're talking. And I'm just sat there. I'm taking it all in. And going, yeah. Well, we need a we need a logo. We need a title for the troll. We need a title for the troll for the competition. We need this. We need that. I've got off the truck. I've got off the course. Where just said, what's going on anyway? Within four weeks, we renamed it the Phoenix Trophy. We got a logo. We got we got nine teams that were that signed up that were going to go. And the draw was going to take place on live on YouTube. I said, what, are we going? I said, we're going to fly out. He said, I'm telling you, so I had to tune into YouTube and, and FC United get pulled out of pot two and they will play a team from Amsterdam, they'll play a team from Warsaw uh, and they'll play a team from Milan. So I've gone, right, I said, so they're going to come here and we're going to go, we're going to fly out. So we're flying. Anyway, October comes around, next thing we're on the plane, we're going out to, we're going out to Warsaw, AKS, AKS, Warsaw, I can't remember, AKS. Uh, we've got out there four or five hundred United fans that come with us there's flares everywhere it was, it was amazing and, yeah. and, and we played them at home and you know the Dutch team pulled out then we went to Milan and we played at the, the home of Napoleon and it was into Milan's uh, old home so that's where they played right. it was prestigious took about five or six hundred fans here Pff, one brilliant finals are out in Rimini goes to Rimini for three or four days uh, 
We played Prog Raptors in the final, won. About eight and nine hundred fans had come out, you could rub his shoulders in. Listen, you, you laugh, but Man United are used to being in Europe and winning Europe and all of a sudden FC United, you know, they, this the, the football club that, that everyone created when they walked away, he's now competing in Europe. So we got into this summer, age went the competition's growing. YouTube, next pot this season we've been pulled with a team from Valencia. Uh, we're playing play a team from Belgium. See, that's what gets like. <clears throat> don't get me wrong. And it's fan old football. Yeah, I, I get it to a certain aspect. But what I'm like, <clears throat> and I suppose that now you've told me <laughs> about the situation that the football club's in. But I think, you know, if you're like serious about wanting to get like into the conference, no, I don't. Even though that's probably created a lot of memories for FC United fans using it, it's probably like a bit of a holiday, you know. Well, and I get that. But I think, <laughs> I do think, Christ, when you're beating a team from Valencia 12 0 and then. Just for some game in Europe, that's all it is. Ah, right, <laughs> we could I like the. I like the. But, I like but, the, the, but last season we're playing, uh, we're playing away in uh, Milan. Mm. Playing away in Milan. Playing them on the Tuesday night. So we're going out on the Monday. That's a few drinks. Go out on Tuesday, a few drinks. Wednesday. I'm up now. I'm Wednesday. Up <laughs> Wednesday. Wednesday, we're coming on. Uh, Right, Saturday we're going to Morpeth away. Yeah, yeah. Thursday we're in training. Where's Curtis Jones? Don't know, Gaff. Where's Curtis Jones? Don't think he's got a flight home here, Gaff. What do you mean? Stayed out there, stayed out there five days. Kurt's gone on the, on wow. the razzle for five days. In terms of the coach on the Saturday morning, he looked absolutely dead. I think he's got black eye off his missus, everything. He never told her, just stayed out there. We later found out that Kurt's got a pound for this because he did it in Rimmon and he's done it everywhere else. So that's, we've had not, right. his missus doesn't listen to this. Right, okay. But anyway, turns up more with Gaffer Carpal. I said, You're playing. Best player on the pitch. Best player. We got beat 1 0. But you imagine that week, you just talk about the competition. Yeah. We've gone out to Milan, we've had a few drinks, we come back training, we get on the coach to Morpeth for three hours. It took it out of us, but we had a really good bonding experience. Yeah. Uh, Listen, if the competition was running summer, it was all pre-season, it'd be great. But but it's not, and you know, I don't know if we'll be in it next season. Yeah, you know, it, it, it doesn't cost you a great deal of money. They right. pay for for us when we go away. We pay for them. All oh, right, we yeah. get the fans. So it's not yeah. it's not a competition. Costs a lot of money. It is an experience. We're in different places. I don't want it to cancel because we're flying out to Valencia a week on Tuesday. So let's just do that one first. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, you might. Yeah. Um, let's say. You've beaten 12 nil. they might say, fuck that. I see. Yeah. Everyone can say what they want about standard. Come on, them get. We could have been, been any team 12 nil. We just put a ball in the back of the net. Yeah. I like to see last Sunday, I won't mention it, but you saw what happened in the Premier League yeah, yeah. with the scoreline. So 12 yeah. nil. yeah, it was all right. But no, I know there's frustrations, but but out there amongst our supporters, it's amazing. Yeah, they walked away, they set the football yeah. club, they dreamt big, they were in the counties, they wanted their own stadium. Who on earth thought they were going to play in Europe and win a European yeah. trophy? Was tongue in cheek about European winners and all that, but but it's been good, it's been great, and and again, people say what they want about it, but as you said, I, I think, think the jealousy goes a long way. I think when when you probably look at if you were involved in it, and it's like because obviously when you're in a team environment, you're a group of mates as well, they will look back on that. Whatever people say, I mean, I don't agree with the the principle no not the principle I, I just think oh it's just a distraction from your league but I get what you're saying when, you, when you're when saying like it's a it's, it's like a bonding thing and it's an experience for the fans and that. so I do get it you think of the slogan that sits around the football club making friends not millionaires yeah you know yeah. and all the and all the uh, the hate that goes to one the Glaziers you know we're making friends across Europe mm-hmm. but they're not millionaire clubs they're all fan old football clubs so the, the theory the logic behind the competition is right could the competition stand and improve? Absolutely. Progress in the final last season were good, and we just beat them two uh, nil. The team at Beveren were a good side, and we beat them three two and four three. But AKS last season struggled, and, and the team from Valencia this season has struggled. But you know, but for me as a manager, after a disappointing defeat against Liverpool on the weekend, yeah. we put twelve in yeah. on Tuesday. And, yeah. You know, yeah. it, it's a good feeling, but but yeah, like I said, I, I can't wait to get a bit of sunshine in Valencia. So yeah, yeah. You know, oh, definitely. I think people are jealous in, in a our few position. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. Why just not? Hope, just hope Curtis Jones isn't coming, so we can't get him back <laughs> on. So it's what it is. But um, so what I want to do, Neil, I've got a few. Uh, obviously, I've spoken about it and everything about the club and your previous time in football, Bamba Bridge and that. I've got a few questions from FC United fans who, to be fair, I was quite surprised because they only put it out today. Uh, so all of them that got in touch, I really do appreciate it. I'll try and get um, as many of them as we can. 
and then we're just going to do a bit of a recap with uh, Neil about what uh, his ambitions are for the future and yeah. what the future also. Uh, just a couple of fans. Um, now, this one is interesting because when you said about Brighton and um, other trips that they've done, so Isaac Murad, I hope I've pronounced that right, Isaac, on Twitter has said, FC have failed to win an opening day every year since 2012, but are we planning anything different for pre-season this summer to maybe combat a slow start, Isaac says? We've, we've played into the league that we, because uh, there's a, a number of teams in the league that we don't play the first game of the season, we'll just kick off on the Tuesday. Yeah. So we'll be all right in that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. No, listen, I mean, Isaac, it's a good question. You know, it's the, it's the thing that's hanging over the, the club's head at the minute. I don't think noise helps. You know, I know the club, the squad had a brilliant pre-season. Uh, there's a lot of noise. We, we flew out to Jersey and then there's a lot of noise about not winning the first game of the season. And, and Allerton beat us here and, and beat us 2-1. Deservedly so, even though, even though we went 1-0 up. Uh, we haven't brought the hoodoo. I think pre-seasons are meticulous, the, the good, the, the well-planned. Uh, it's hard. Do we Have we played too many games? Probably. But but a lot of teams want to play us or have, have got a backdated feature against us. So we've yeah. got an honour. You know, we, we've got an honour that game. I've said to the board this summer, I only want to play eight. And, and the fixture secretary Jim Brunt and to Natalie Atkinson we want to be able to do more on the training pitch because you get a couple of leg sessions in and then you straight into games uh, but no listen we're not going to go on forever not win the first game of the season you know we've got to be better with our recruitment yeah. this summer and I'll, I'm first to admit that but hopefully Isaac we, we can you know as long as I'm still here you know I can say that you know we'll, we'll do our best to win the first game of the season yeah. you watch now it'll be Macclesfield won't it well, Macclesfield away do you know what <laughs> Do you know what though, I mean to Isaac there, because it's a good question, but I think every club I've been involved with, I've, I think we've only won like a couple of, uh, I mean, and let's have it right, losing the first game of the season, all right, if you broke it down like Monday night football, they, it, they might say different, but is it going to have a massive burden on your season? Probably not. You know what I mean? Everybody's going to lose games, but this one is from... Tony Jury on Facebook, who said, um, You've signed, have I pronounced this right? Go Van, Van White. Van White, Matty Van White, yeah. yeah. Um, Gab- Gabadon yeah. and Halls all come from lower league, mm. and you can see progress from all three on their journey. Have we got eyes on any for next season? Yeah, uh, I've used this phrase in interviews upon that we're fishing at the minute. Uh, we know our restrictions. Brian Richardson, um, I don't think he's seen his missus for about three weeks because he just keeps giving me yeah. names. Yeah. He's been out watching game after game. He's got a list of about 40 names. Yeah. But I said to Brad, cut them back. I want to, Our DNA is this age group. Our DNA is this league. And, you know, I, I, I went to watch Dante Gavin on play for West Eds and Charlton three or four times. I watched against Longridge. Caught my eye. I thought he does great. Van White came training with us a couple of years ago. Um, we sent him back to Fullwood, who have been brilliant with us. Fullwood Amateurs, Tony Eskett, Dean Crossan. Blackie, they'd be brilliant. We played in pre season. I didn't yeah. even know that. Great wow. guy, great guy. Uh, guy Hall said to him last year, you get to the gym, you need to bulk up, there's an opportunity for you here. And, and we kept to our word. I think Guy Hall's the next Adam Dodd for me, you know, in terms of what, what his career will do. Mm-hmm. I think Van Weig will find his feet will be great. Gabadon's exciting. But there's other lads out there as well, and, and we're blooding the youngsters in. We've got Sandro De Costa now, who maybe the penny's dropped, he's coming through the, the academy, and you know, he's six foot left winger. We chuck Matty Rolls in the other night from the academy at 16 on Tuesday night. We've got feelers out in the northwest counties and the league below. We've got a lad coming train tonight, uh, Ross, uh, uh, Max Kane, who was at Clitheroe last season. So there are good players out there, but I, it's getting the right ones. I think you, you bang on with that. And I think it's it's up to having people going out. And, and like you say, if you've got a where you can say, like, can you go and have a look at that? And I know... Um, Tommy does the same for for uh, Southport and stuff like that. Where they are out there, aren't they? It's just identifying. I mean, I don't think Lynn's bothered that Brian goes out seven nights a week. I'll be honest with you. You know, he's but he's got to learn. He's got to learn, Brian. Do you know quickly. why? Because all that <clears throat> chocolate in his out. Have you ever seen Brian when he's not got a bar of chocolate in his ne- pocket? Never, never. He's like no. the biggest chocolate. Uh, all, all, all I would say to, to to Lynn and Brian is that he's got a, he's got a really bad habit as Brian. You know, so he's gone out watching a game of football and he's rung me and he's done a full dossier on it, but he doesn't know how to lock his phone. So yeah. he always gives a pocket dial and the other night he's getting into bed with his missus at whatever time of night. I'm like, Brian, Brian. Brian, yeah, I just have to up. I thought, what's going on here, Brian? But we, it's a laughing joke, we get a pocket dial and when he rings you, you know your phone's going to ring half an hour later. And he's like, oh, I won't learn how to lock it. He's had a phone for 25 years. He doesn't know how to lock his phone. Oh, no. So, uh, so yeah. Um, it's, it, it's not, uh, 
it's not his forte <laughs> technology is it but uh, yeah so thanks Tony for that question and um, Julie Sh- Julie Shawnee I hope I pronounced that properly on Facebook um, does Neil have any regrets about leaving his post his position as head teacher and can you thank him from me for going above and beyond for the club in difficult times oh, that's so, nice that's yeah. really nice uh, did I have any regrets my dream was to work here full time uh, when I was given the opportunity uh, time was come out of headship I was I was sacrificing a huge salary but it wasn't about money I wanted to I wanted to live my life on goal and be in football full time uh, and I had a great year I had an amazing year uh, doing it but again due to the finances you know we probably we jumped too quickly right. and, and, and I was going to and I sacrificed myself I resigned at Christmas I said listen I don't want the full time job we can't pay the salary that people are wrong. What is it? 120 grand a year? Or something someone said. No, it's nowhere near no, that. <laughs> that like, yeah. So, just no, I, and that was zero on there. that was my <laughs> <that was laughs> yeah, teacher salary. Well, no, I dropped significantly, but listen, I, I loved it. Yeah. When Christmas came, and uh, I said to the board, I spoke to Paul Butcher, and I said, "Listen, the club comes first, and yeah. you know, I'll still give you everything. I'm still the first team manager. I'll still oversee, you know, academy. I'll still be at girls' game, women's games. I'll be everywhere, but I just won't be a day to day. And you know, I'll fall back into education and. I don't have no regrets back whatsoever. Back teaching, back consultancy work, doing a bit of consultancy with the head teachers, but I don't have any, don't have any regrets. And you know, this this club's my life now, and you know, I want to just continue to work hard for it. Yeah, thanks, uh, Julie. And um, so we've got, we'll just we'll do the two more because one of the questions leads on to what I was yeah. going to ask anyway. So, um, best and worst moments as FC United manager. Worst moment. And that's from Logan Montgomery on Facebook. Logan, worst moment, none eaten. None eaten at home. Uh, by a long shot, you know, knowing that knowing that the club had done everything they could and the players had turned against the club and put in that performance. You know, the relegation didn't hurt as half as hard as the none eaten game. But also, you know, in, in a roundabout way, I'm, I'm so glad that I found out what I found out. Uh, so, yeah, that, that sticks. That'll never go away. Yeah. That'll never go away. The best, the best memory. Uh, I've got, I've got quite a few. Uh, there's one that's non-football related. There's one that's not pitch related. It's when the new board was appointed and, and the CEO and, and the business plan came to fruition. And you know, ninety nine percent of members bought into the five year business plan about where we want the football club to be. It was the first time that I felt we've got real direction now as a club, and, and that that gave me so much hope. You know, and yeah, there's going to be pitfalls along the way and, and we're finding it now but the club to have that vision and, and for the majority of the fans to, to buy it or the members owners to buy into that that gave me a, that gave me a lot of joy uh, but from a you know from a from a footballing point of view uh, the FA Cup first round mm. against Doncaster yeah. goes a long way the, the, the season that we finished second uh, goes a long way but you know I know we've just talked about it but, but leading FC United into Europe you know going to Rimini last season winning the Phoenix Trophy seeing how many Reds that we took out there, rubbing shoulders with people for two or three days, just walking past people in the street and people tapping the badge and talking to you. It, it was a moment I'll never forget watching Michael Potts lift the trophy. But more than that, and this is why the, the moment isn't just Rimini, my lifelong player, best mate, sees it like a son, captain of the football club now, Adam Dodd, uh, suffered a, a cardiac arrest yeah. uh, only weeks before we went out to Rimini. And he died. He died. The daughter, he died for nine minutes, and you know, due to what his girlfriend did and, and, and the wonderful medical staff that, that, that brought him round. You know, Doddy. Doddy was able uh, after the after the final to be able to be seen on FaceTime, and we rang Doddy straight away in front of all the fans and showed Doddy. Doddy was out there in a hospital bed. You know, just come round off his operation. We knew that he was going to be on the road to recovery, and, and all the fans started singing the the Adam Dodd battered cod song. Yeah, and you know, just to see. I mean, wingman sat there, you know, knowing that he hasn't died and that trophy, the shirt draped over with Dodd on the back of it, number three, you know, the, the things that followed that and I'd seen back out playing, yeah. you know, seeing Adam Dodd back out playing and seeing Adam Dodd in Rimini, that, that's got to be I, I the don't, best moment. I don't, know, I don't know the lad personally, but mm-hmm. I, I remember when I seen that on um, on Twitter that he'd had the, uh, you know, the, the yeah. problem that he, he ended up having. Uh, it, yeah, I was, I was, I was gutted because it, I think he's uh, a fabulous footballer, Amazing. and I think probably one of the best 
left-sided players in the uh, league on his day and, and I'm not going to well, lie well we tried to sign him at Warrington no listen I know, I know he did yeah. yeah and I'm not going to lie you know we both shed a tear when he came back on yeah. you know, the other week for the first game but it just shows you know yeah. anything could be yeah. possible if you, if you put your mind to it so yeah best moment brilliant that that is that's a, a cracker and <clears throat> this one and then we'll finish off with uh, the stuff I've got so um, Connor Price has asked what are your long-term goals as as FC United manager, which will lead into a little bit what we were going to say. Anyway. Long-term goals are, you know, everyone wants promotion. Everyone yeah. wants, but I, I genuinely want this football club to be stable. I genuinely want the club, you know, to win, lose, a draw, to, to be able to function uh, financially mm. stable. You know, I know that one of the manif- rules in the manifesto is that we're not for profit. We're not for profit as a football club. But we can be sustainable financially and at the minute we, you know we're not we, we, we can't wait to be and, and the business plan you know goes to that and I think once we're stable I think then we, we kick into the next gear of the, of the finals plan and we go around where do we want to be and I've bought into that I've said to the club listen as manager I can take the hits I've got big shoulders I can be booed I can be slated on social media I can do whatever you want it doesn't, doesn't really affect me I know people say it should do but it doesn't but it's come to be stable and then the board to turn to me or the CEO and go now we're going to have a go at it. Now we're ready financially. We're not going to have to cut. We're going to have a go at it. When we have a go at it, we know we can track anybody to this football club for the right reasons. And obviously, money isn't the right reason. But unfortunately, the world we're living in now, it, it goes a long way. And you know, if we can attract that right person or that right team, you know, and we're not focusing on loan signings or that because of where the budget presents itself to at the minute, we can have a right go. Mm. And, and that's what I want. You know, I, I want to be... People, people ask me, where do you want to be? I want to be FC United. I want to be full time again. I want to be in the level above. I want to be in the level above that. I want to be in the league. You know, that's what I want. But we've, we've got a chance now because we've got a board that have got a direction and a vision. We've got a membership that have got a direction and a vision. We've got a CEO and a team that are operating in the office on a, on a daily basis that have got that. Have got that. And we're going in the right direction. Yeah. But Jesus, we've got a long way to go. And let's not kid ourselves. Does that sort of. Thanks for the question, by the way. Um, but um, does that sort of tie in with. Your own, well, you said about where do you see FC United and that, but does that time with your own ambitions or could you? For me, I want to go as high as I can, you know, as quick as I can. Yeah. The platform that FC United have given me is, is amazing. The, the shit that people don't see is yeah. on the dressing room, you know, kind of the saying that a lot of people have said is, is really, really difficult. And I, I, I've lost interest in people going, oh, same excuse, same excuse. I just put two things up to them because their excuse is it's reality. Yeah. But I don't want to jump. And no disrespect to any club in our league, you know, if, if I get sad to a lost my job, you might have to go sideways, you might have to go backwards, you know, I would never say it. Why would I ever want to leave this wonderful stadium with wonderful fan base, with wonderful staff in it, a great place? You know, I don't. Mm. But ultimately, if they can't meet the ambitions that, that I've got as well, you know, we're going to have to part ways at one stage, you know. And that's saying that the club may, may or may not be here, we want it to be here for years to come. But if they ever came and said, we haven't got, we can't meet it, we can't meet your expectations or... Then that's that conversation, but at the minute, the amount of our work's going on behind this football club, behind the scenes to get us where we need to be. Do you see that? I'm not jumping. Do you I'm see not. that being in, That was one of the <clears throat> questions. One of the questions I wanted to say, which I'll go on to. For, when you say about obviously realistic ambitions, but do you see managing in, in the football league yeah. as a realistic ambition? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Would it be fair to say, because I. I had this conversation with a manager on a previous podcast and he, he come up with this and I thought it's right and it was, John Coleman said it and Liam Watson said it and he said, if you want to be a football league manager you have to make yourself a football league manager in, in terms of you don't see a league two club now or a league one club now, you, you might see a championship club, who'll say, I mean Matty Taylor he'll have from Parbo where I'm from. Um, he was Exeter manager in League One. He'd only just got promoted to League One, and he's ended up with the Rotherham job in the Championship. But you don't. Yeah, it's like all, all like you have to make yourself a, a league manager. Now, would would you say that's yeah? So you've I got to turn true. yourself you, into and, and, and some, take a club like from Conference to League Two. Some people you know? have said in your interviews you need to be more out there. You need to be you know putting yourself forward. I'm not. I'm not like that. I don't want to be doing that. That's not. It's not what the interviews about. The interviews about digesting the game. I think you've got to be lucky. Mm-hmm. I think you've got to you've got to have money. A lot of people, you know, go out of this league with money, get out of the next league with money. Look at Salford, mm-hmm. got money. Yeah. Coley got. I'm not saying he got lucky. Eric Worley at the time 
uh, God rest his soul, was, was Akron and Stanley Chairman when they got out of that league, you know, the league below us or, the, or this one, and then they just molted, yeah. you know, and, and they got and, and they had some they had some good times, you know, yeah. under Eric, and then and then John's taking the club on to unbelievable levels now, yeah. and they've got new owners and the, the work that's gone on there, the new bar that's been put in there, Dave it Burgess, is oh, it's absolutely amazing, it's but good, uh, but he deserves what he's got to, but he, he got, you know. The, at some stage in his career, he would have got a slice of luck. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah, my mate said to me, Fucking hell, Rena, when are you going to manage a club with a bit of money? Bamba Bridge didn't have any FC United have got none. Yeah. And I'm going, Well, you know, I'll, I'll put my coaching against anybody's, you know. Yeah. And I laugh and say, Get Guardi Olds come manage FC United and see what he does. Yeah. You know, just see whether or not he can't sign the players. You've got to come with them restraints. We'll get judged on your coaching ability. And his coaching ability is unbelievable, isn't it? It's brilliant. But I'd, I'd be really interested to, to see how people would fare. Yeah. Uh, with, with with what I have at the minute, I've shown that I can do it at Banbridge, I've shown that I can do it here. Uh, but there's going to come a time that, that I want my own ambitions meeting. You yeah. know, and I don't want to be, no disrespect to Northern Premier League, it's a fantastic league, but I don't want to be here for the rest of my career and, and, yeah. and I don't want to be stagnated and go, Reynolds a Northern Premier League manager. Do you think, because um, do you think you're not. more do you think you're more prepared now? With the experiences that you, you've had, that if you got into the confidence, do you think the club would be prepared for it, and do you think you'd be? Yeah, I mean the club got up there, didn't they? You know, Margie got the club up there. Mm. Uh, I think they punched 15, 16, 17, yeah. and out, you know, and then got relegated. You know, the money, the money wasn't there. Uh, I think if you go, you've got to be prepared to go and go again. Yeah. And you've seen that with your Scarboroughs, etc. Yeah. They're going and going again, and you know they're, they're being well, well backed. Uh, Chorley's etc from your FA Cup money but you know, when I started as manager at 29 at Clitheroe with Pete Smith to, to where and then went back in at, at Bama Ridge assistant manager I think that what I learned off Greenwood and, and Crow you know was great and then and then I, I kind of I created my own little mantra as a manager you know uh, the suit you know back then and you know that that was a little bit of a talking point and then coming to have FC you got United, a little bit more um, Guardiola now have you no, it's the, the suit still, still, still come out. I, I just, listen, I, I, you have I, took I, a bit of stick yeah, for it. I do it to get a reaction. It's yeah, really good. Yeah. I, really good. And people might go, what do you mean? People are talking about you. People yeah. love to get on social media. Go, I, I, I remember jumping on the bloody uh, the wall at Whitby away with one. I'm singing with the fans and everything. Oh, wow. I they got belters all over social media. It was the best thing ever. Yeah. Everyone's going, you're right. I'm going, it's the best thing ever. I'm living rent free in these kids' heads. It's like they're talking about me. You know, and that, and that sounds stupid, but. Give them a little bit of fun. Do you you think, know, they um, must be bored at home. Do you think you've, you've got into some <laughs> managers and coaches' heads from doing it? Oh, of course I have. That dressing room was gone. Do you he's, know, like, distracted He's a wanker, he's this. He's coming up a pack, I'm a normal guy, I've got really good mates. It's, but you go toe-to-toe and, and they love it, don't they? Arrogant, yeah, big time, FC and I. It's not they'd like that. Yeah. It's not like that. But if that if that makes them feel better, then fair, fair enough. And I remember, oh, manager, a few years, you know, we had a bit of fallout uh, Nan Twitch away, Dave Cook. I love oh, Dave, yeah, I love Dave, Dave yeah. Cook and yeah. you know, he's absolutely brilliant, but I was there in my suit and uh, he's giving me grief, I'm giving him grief. We've won the game one nil and David just had these false teeth fit, you know, these white teeth. And Dave is a brilliant fellow and I've apologised, so I hope he doesn't mind me telling this story. But he kept talking to me and every time he's going, yeah, like his teeth are falling down, he's going, oh, my teeth put me in my way, will you? They've been talking to me. And he the, the angrier he got, the teeth would fall lower. You know, and I was still there in my suit anyway, we won one nil. Lo and behold, at the end of the game, it flipping royally kicked off. The 22 man brawl. It was like a sea, it was just wave from side to side. But but I apologise to that. I said there was nothing in it. He's a great guy. You know, he's been missed in, in non league football at the minute. But that, that story went a long way. But I know that I was getting on the people's skin. But I was trying to do it. I wasn't trying to do it intentionally. I was trying to say that, you know, this is my style as a manager. I, re- I remember, um, I was trying to think last night, what did it kick off about? Uh, Warren, you know, when Warren yeah, got in, and then I realised. It was Ben Huff, yeah. and he put yeah, you. It was in front of you, and he, he put a heavy tackle in, which I, I didn't think it was thing. But you like obviously want yeah. to make the mind up of the ref. We all do it. Like I, I was one of the worst for like throwing yeah. the hands up, and um, <laughs> it just went off. Oh, it went off. It was brilliant. <laughs> but I've got to say, I've got to defend. But we get the best technical scores each week. We we, we yeah. are very respectful to the officials and the opposition. I think people have have got me wrong completely. But you know, some people will say he's a you know. I used to read this stuff on social media. There was a guy called Dunkin' Donut or something. He's writing all over me. He's sending 50 tweets a day and someone else. Like they've completely got me wrong, but they, they will never come to your face and go, no. this is what it is. And I feel sorry for them people. I yeah. genuinely do. I just go, but if I'm if I'm giving you a little bit of kudos, a little bit of time to talk about it, then so be it. But yeah. I'm not doing it intentionally. I'm yeah. doing it. I'm trying to I'm trying to create something for myself and the football club. 
I didn't put a suit on to get a reaction. I don't run down the touchline. I don't sing at Whitby to get a reaction. I just, before the moment, winning football games means everything to me. Yeah. Being at football means everything to me. Yeah. You know, and, and, and sometimes you get caught up in the emotion. I'm an emotional guy. Mm-hmm. You know, I think over the years I've, I've, I've calmed down a lot. You know, Brian will sometimes go think about it. But, you know, we beat guys there one day the other week, last minute, and I'm down the touchline with the fans. And why not? If it's all right for Mourinho, it's all right for me. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, yeah. and that's, that's the passion of football. If, if I ever become the manager that just stands there and doesn't celebrate, then I may just wrap up. One, one thing I, I said, um, and I, I've said this a lot, you can't put a front on them and be something that you're not because eventually the mask will fall off mm. and you've got to be who you, who you are. And, yeah. and it, it, like you say, you can't try and be somebody else. You know, and, and that's what Brian goes on about more, mate. You love him yeah. or Well, if we had a pint, I think 99.9% of that people will go out and say, he's all right, he's yeah. okay, you know, he doesn't cause any... But I think out there, when they see you on an interview, or they see you in a dugout, or they see you get beat, or they see you sing with the fans and go, oh, it must be a wanker. Well, maybe, maybe not, you know, but like I say, that that's their opinion. Yeah. Uh, my opinion is that, you know, I, I get on with people, players want to play for me, managers yeah. want to come and work with me. I've got really good friends in non-league, i.e., you know, Claggy. You know, that there's a lot of really good people in Jamie Milligan, a lot of good people. And, and, and people, you can take your face value, but it, it doesn't, on a stop, it doesn't really bother me I don't lose yeah. sleep over what people think I lose sleep over not winning football games you've got to have thick skin yeah you've got to have thick, and thick skin and, that, and that's not an arrogance by the way yeah. that's just that you've got to do it otherwise yeah. it will send you to the loony bin yeah, really yeah. quickly and, and, and no one's doing that to me and if the, the time is ever up I'll go listen my time's up but you know I've been managing seven years now and I want to be managing another 17, 27 years I've got no intention of walking yeah. away and, and, and yeah you know more than likely you, you face a sack or you face a change of club in your career but I'll never stop working yeah. like I'm working now. And if that rattles people, gets them up the wrong way, then, then tough, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. And the final one, which I've asked to well, every, every football manager anyway, what's, um, what's the three non-negotiables for you to manage correct? Like, you know, for, what has to be in place, the three things that have to be in place for you to manage effectively? The dressing room's got to be right. Yeah. The dressing room is sacrilegious. It's got to be bang on. And anybody that causes any disruption or confusion in that dressing room has got to go yeah my staff call me the grim reaper you know the hatchet man who's going next and i don't enjoy doing it as head teacher i had to get rid of 40 staff and football you get rid of people i get rid of people when it's not right if the right shoes aren't right you've got to go if it's ability we'll get you at another club yeah but if your attitude's not right that, that's that's the first thing first and foremost secondly you've got to have fun you've got to have fun you've got to laugh you give up your life in non-league football if I come here tonight and don't laugh and there's something wrong and I want to make sure we laugh before we go out we laugh on the training ground we have fun along the way but my, 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 my team is, is you know full of fun it's brilliant and my third thing is trust yeah. trust is massive in my life you know when I was working at FC United full time we had a wedding away day and now they actually said put your key word on there mine's trust uh, when I, was a young, when I was a young lad, I was adopted as a young lad and, you know, my mum and dad, who took me down, my dad passed away, you know, built me up on trust and trust goes everywhere in my life and you know, if you get let down at some stage in your life, you've got to be able to rebuild and trust and trust is key, you know, whatever goes on in that dressing room stays in that dressing room, I'm certainly not, you know, a Steve Cunningham who's going to come out and tell my players to bring 22 change of clothes next week, you know, I'm going to bring it out and cut it off, I'm, I'm only winding him up, but trust is, is massive and I'm not going to anger people out to dry, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. What goes on in that dressing room stays in there. And then if anyone breaks the trust, then then you can't be here. But if you break, if you prepare to break the trust, then it's not against me. It's against yourself. And if you if you're going to let yourself down, then you're going to not go a long way in life. So the three things. Yeah, well, that's a nice one to finish off on. But Neil, just want to thank you very much for your time. I know it's uh, it's that busy time of the season. It's that wet Thursday night. So <laughs> I'm going to let Renault get out yeah. onto the uh, Listen, into the bleed. I loved it. Thank yeah. you very much, and, and hopefully, you know, people enjoy listening to it. We've been inside. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get ready for for Atherton Saturday. I'm sure it'll be like a bowling green at Atherton. Yeah, on Saturday. Oh, I, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Neil. Cheers.